glory that Jesus has given to us. How many of us believe that Jesus has given us victory? Just last Sunday, we were celebrating it. You know, he was slapped, beaten, you know, shamed, ridiculed, killed, crucified, dead, buried. On Sunday morning, he resurrected. And he gave us the victory. So, how do you enjoy this victory? A lot of people, you know, they are on either one extreme end or the other extreme end. One extreme end is, I don't care. I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to have fun. I will do everything I can do because here or not is where my hope ends. That's one, uh, one side of enjoyment. There are some Christians, they, they don't really care about the, the, the heavenly kingdom we are talking about. They live their life anyhow and they enjoy. Then there is another end of people that are saying, yes, I believe in Jesus. He's my Lord. But you know what? I'm going to suffer. Suffer long. I'm not going to enjoy anything. I'm going to pay for my sin by my life side. And they don't enjoy anything. They just believe in suffering. Those two, two extreme ends, they are virtually the same. Christ came and he has given himself as an example of how to enjoy the victory that he has given to his followers. So this morning, Jesus Christ is going to be our case study before we go into the world, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are here in your presence. Just like on that very day, that very day of resurrection, the disciples, they gathered. And as they gathered, Jesus walked into their midst. And he breathed the breath of life upon them. We are here in your presence. We want you to breathe upon us. Jesus, breathe upon us. Amen. Jesus, breathe upon us. Amen. I want you to pray for yourself. Pray, pray for yourself and say, Jesus, breathe upon me. Today is the first day of the week, just like that day. Breathe upon me. Students, that God will make you excellent. The spirit of excellence is, is the spirit of the Holy Spirit that you will excel. That God will breathe upon your career. God will breathe upon the call of God upon your life, your spiritual life, that you begin to love him. When Christ breathes upon you, he will, his love will fill your heart. Father, fill my heart with the breath of life this morning. Let me love you more dearly, more deeper, oh God. Draw me closer unto you. Ask God to breathe the breath of peace upon your life. Peace upon my home. Peace upon my children. Peace upon my marriage. Peace upon my career. Peace upon my ways. Everywhere I go, peace. Has got to breathe a breath of joy, joy, joy upon your children. Good health for, for, for you. Deliverance for those that need deliverance. Power of the Holy Spirit is the power to break the yoke of sin. Father, breathe upon me. Let every yoke of sin be broken upon my life. In the name of Jesus, Father, breathe upon our children. Give them the ability, oh God, to live above sin, above self above flesh, above sorrow, above Satan, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. How to enjoy your victory. I love enjoyment. How many of you know? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so it's not a sin to, to enjoy. That is the cocoa of the message today. It's not a sin. But there is a way that Christ himself has laid down for us to enjoy our victory. Remember, our, uh, this month has been titled the month of our total victory. And I trust God, I believe God, that God has given us victory in many areas. In our marital, you know, uh, uh, situations, God has given us victory. Concerning our finance, God has given us victory. Then how do you now enjoy the victory? I'm going to give us five points 
on how to enjoy the victory that Christ has given unto us. Let us open our Bible to John chapter 20. I will read verse 11. John 20, verse 11. And number one point that I want to give to us is Jesus showed up. Jesus, he showed up. After he resurrected, he showed up for his disciples. Jesus will show up for you. Amen. But you, do you know what? You too, you have to show up for Jesus. If you don't show up for him, he might not show up for you. John 20, 11. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the womb, into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been laid. Then they said unto her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. Verse 14. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said, said unto her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried away, carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Jesus knows your name. Jesus knows your name. Jesus said, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus show, showed up for Mary. So, if Jesus, who has gone through all that he went through, and died, and was buried, and descended to the lowest part of hell, to go and take the key of victory and life from the devil, and came out in glory, he has so much to do. He has gone through many things. He has been through a lot. Because the word we hear these days is that I'm going through a lot. I am going through a lot. That is our word today. But Jesus went through a lot. Yet, he showed up for Mary. Why did he show up for Mary? Because Mary showed up for him. We, do, we are doing so many things today. And we have been through so many, through so many things. And we refuse to show up for the Lord. In many ways. In many ways. If Mary had said, you know, like all the agony on Friday, even all the weeping on Saturday, you know, I cannot go and check on the Lord. I cannot be where I'm supposed to be. She would have missed the appearance of Jesus. Remove your doubts this morning, brethren. The word of the, of the Lord that is coming to you today. How to celebrate your victory is to remove your doubts. Stop doubting. Strengthen your faith. Clear your confusion. And come out for the Lord. Don't live for yourself. That is how to celebrate the victory of Christ-like Always making sure, deliberate, intentional attitude and action of showing up for the Lord. That is how to enjoy your victory. A lot of us, we say God is faithful. If God is faithful, you should be grateful. God is faithful, be grateful. God is faithful, be, faith, be grateful. Your gratefulness is what will show that you are faithful to the Lord. Don't live your life as if you are ungrateful. Number two. 
Jesus, our case study, he modeled his celebration of his victory by showing up in a community. He modeled community life for us. You know, a lot of us, we say, oh, you know, if only you know what I'm going through. We cannot, we cannot come into the community of faith. Hmm. This is a very powerful message for me. As, I, as God was giving me, I was like, God, you know, we were studying in our Bible, our Sunday school this morning, we were talking about Christians that will be caught unaware. Because they have patterned their life according to the world. They will be somewhere. Somewhere else. And the rapture will happen. They will be caught unaware. Because they refuse to live their life according to the pattern that the owner of the kingdom has laid down for us. A model community. John 21. And I will read verses 9 to 13. John 21. 9 to 13. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coal there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land, full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet, none of the disciples there asked him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Then Jesus came and, and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. You see, a lot of time when you see brethren eating, it's like they are committing sin and they are going to hell, they should be fasting, they should be on Monte, they should be in the valley, and you know, binding and losing. But Jesus was eating breakfast. It is a good thing, it is, it is, it is the doctrine of Jesus, he was fasting, 40 days and 40 nights. He was praying, you know, at the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed. There is a time to pray. There is a time to gather with the brethren and to eat together. A modern community. Breaking bread. Breaking, uh, uh, you know, sharing the fishes with them and eating with them. How many of us love to eat with the brethren? How many of us need, you know, love to celebrate with the brethren? I've had a, a couple of friends in the time past, many years, many, many years back, when they want to do something, they say, oh, no, you know my friends in the church and my friends in the world. And I'm like, really? Are we supposed to be living double life? Anywhere you are, your standard is disciples' that standard. Whether at work or in the church, one standard. I'm not saying we cannot invite unbelievers to our parties or people that we know that they are not. It's even great when you invite them. But are they your friends? Do you call them your friends? Are they actually your friends? Do you know the meaning of friends? And I'm talking to the students now. You know, don't just call anybody your friends. Yoruba people say, you want joy, you want laughing, sure, eh? If your characters, if you are swearing and using words and smoking stuff, you're not my friends. You can't be. We're just together somewhere. We're just in a group. We're in a class. We're in a school. You are not my friends. He model community. He was in their midst, eating with them. Let us learn to celebrate our, our victory in the midst of the brethren. That is, this is our family. This is our household. Household of, of Christ. Be very intentional about your fellowship. Don't just come to the fellowship or, or you, you come to the fellowship as if you are not happy. You are not, you are not encouraged. 
You are not joyful. It's a, it's a duty. It has to be done. Don't come to the house of God like that. Come joyfully. Come happy. Come celebrating with the brethren. Praise the Lord. That is what Jesus did. If you read from chapter John 20, 24 to 28, it's still talking about this connection. You know, a lot of people, they like to, you know, they say, oh, I'm going through something. Then they withdraw themselves from the brethren. Then where is your victory? Where is your victory? When you withdraw yourself from the assemblies of the children of God, where is your victory? I go to point number three. Jesus comforts the brokenhearted. That is how to celebrate your victory. You should be comforted. You know, a lot of uh, Christians, they are still grieving, grieving, and grieving. And that is why a lot of people are not attracted to our lives. When you are living your life as if the whole world is on your shoulder, you are not comforted. Jesus showed up. He comforted the broken hearted. He consoled the woman. He said, woman, stop crying. I have resurrected. Let us read that chapter 20, verse 16. In verse 16 of John chapter 20, As I read, when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. That is one. Let's go. That's verse 20. Let's read verse 16. Verse 16. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned. I said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus comforted Mary. The disciples were happy. Where is the joy of our salvation? If we are not showing that we are happy and joyful people. Where is our victory? How many of people, how many people, have you seen people that have won a war before and they start crying? Or they are just, you know, walking sluggishly. No! You will see them. They will be joyful. They will be bubbling with joy. Let us bubble with joy. That is how to live and show that we are victorious people. If truly you are be comforted, then comfort another. Comfort other people. You know, so a lot of us, we are so much buried in our own situations and circumstances. Oh, I don't have a good job. You know, you know, I'm still managing. You know, uh, you know, I'm schooling. You know, you know, you know. And we are just very grown people. No. The same comfort that the Lord has comforted you that you have received your victory over issues of life. Go and comfort other people. Let your life show that you are comforting others. Children, you can comfort your, your friends in school. You know, uh, a child was telling me about two weeks ago that um, uh, she was a little sad because one of her classmates, the parents, the parents are divorcing. And this uh, divorce happens to be a second divorce for the woman. And the heart of that young child was broken. And this little girl, too, that happens to be a classmate to this um, uh, other young girl, was raising a prayer point. Say, let us pray for my friend. She's not happy. Her mom is not happy. This is the mom's second, second marriage. And now they are divorcing. They have put their house on sale. And they are packing. And she was confused. She doesn't know what is going to happen next. That is a young girl. Children, you can comfort your friends. When your friends are saying they are going through things, you have to have the word of God in you. If truly you are victorious, if truly you are a Christian, talk to them about Christ. I say, you know what? I was going through a particular situation sometimes they go to, but you know what? What happened to me? 
Jesus comforted me. The Holy Spirit comforted me. And you are speaking the word of God because they have a situation. Maybe they lost a game or they failed an exam or there's something going on. Let us live our life intentionally. It's not until when we hold microphone and we say we want to do crusade that we can minister and evangelize. It's on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four. Jesus redeemed mistakes. John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. John 21, 15 to 17. Jesus redeemed mistakes. In that place, he's talking about Peter. Jesus Christ came to Peter and said, Do you love me? Three times. You remember Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. So Jesus asked to ask him three times. Again, that do you love me? And Peter said, Ah, Lord, do you know that I love you? And he said to him, feed my lamp. This means that Jesus forgave Peter. Brethren, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have committed sin before, raise up your hand. If I, if I see somebody that did not put her up, that means you are claiming to be self, you know, you are claiming self-righteousness. Every one of us, we have seen at one point or the other. And Jesus forgave us. But the question I want to ask you this morning is, have you forgiven yourself? Jesus has forgiven your sin. He said you should forgive others. You say, oh, I, I receive forgiveness from the Lord. I have forgiven you others. But as for me, I cannot forgive myself. You, you might not say it with your words, but you are saying it with the way you live your life. Every little thing that you are talking about, you say, you know, I was doing this, I was doing that. You keep recounting your sin. The Bible says that he has wiped dead all of them away. He has blotted out every ordinance and handwritings that are against you. He has nailed them to the cross. And he says, it is finished. Why are you still carrying your sin? Why are you still carrying your sin? Oh, I remember when I was growing up, I was a young girl. Uh, it's because of that situation. It's because of that situation. I committed that abortion. I'm still feeling guilty because I killed somebody. And that child now, I am still wondering and wondering and wondering. Jesus has forgiven you. Forgive yourself. Do you know why that is very important? A lot of people that have not forgiven themselves, they are still hurting on the inside. And when people are hurting, they are grumpy. Hurting people hurt others. A lot of issues and the things that people throw around, you know, craving for attention and throwing tantrum and becoming envious and doing all manners of sorts. It's because of their inner self that is already wounded. They are not healed. They are in prison themselves. So if you have put yourself in prison, and you have caged yourself. How can you, how can you flesh out? How can you breathe on others? How can you comfort others? How can you shine as a light to others? A lot of things that people do around you is not about you. You know, they call you names. Oh, holier than thou. She's always in touch. She's doing this. It's not about you. It's about them. Their inner man is sick. Because they refuse to forgive themselves. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus redeemed mistakes. He forgave. Forgive yourself. And lastly, Jesus instructed and empowered for service. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of us are workers? We are partners with Jesus in this place. That we are doing one thing or the other for Jesus. Let us put up our hands. If you are working for the Lord in Jesus' palace, so... God bless you and reward you. You have to impart others to do the same service that you are doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The first scripture that I read, John chapter 20, verse 22. 
This is 2022. Praise the Lord. This is 2020. That scripture, hold it. Go and print it when you get home and put it on your door. 20, John 2020, because you are in 2020. Jesus came and breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. He empowered. This year, you have to be empowered and you have to empower others. Look at our young, uh, young teenagers. They are, they are teaching the children church. That is all we are talking about. So it's not just about you, okay, I'm doing something, they also go. You have to teach other people how to do the same. If you are leading prayer, teach people how to pray. If you are singing, teach people how to sing. Whatever you are doing, you have to empower others. 2022, empower somebody. Hallelujah. Share the gospel with your life. I'm concluding. Easter might be over. It was last week. Easter Sunday, Easter Monday, everybody. We are celebrating. But for you and I, Easter is not, is not over. It, our Easter is every day. Our victory is every day. Yes. Our celebration is every day. Yes. Enjoying the kingdom is every day. Walking in liberty is every day. Living a joyous life is every day. You have to assess continually the power of Easter. The victory of Easter is on a daily basis. So when you wake up in the morning, that scripture that I asked you to put, put it there. Jesus, breathe on me. Empower me today. And as I go, he said, as the Father sent you, so I am sending you. So as you are going out, you are intentional about how you are going to live your life. No matter how many people you are going to court in, come in contact with, you are empowering them because you have received the bread of life. And finally, as you are going to go out of this place today, be assured that you are not alone. Because Jesus Christ said, I will be with you to the end of the world. Whether you are in fire, whether you are upon the water walking, Jesus is there with you. Let us pray. And our number one prayer point that I want us to pray right now is, Father, show up for me again and again. I don't know the area that you still want Jesus to show up for you. I don't know what you are still asking him to show up for you concerning. Lord, show up for me. Yes, Lord, show up for me. In my prayer life, Father, show up for me again and again. I come to you, my Father. I want you to show up for me by your power. And I want you to pray and promise and say, Jesus, I will show up for you. I will show up for you. I will continue to show up for you. Anytime you call, Anytime you, are, you, you needed somebody, I will show up for you, Jesus. Give me the grace to show up for you. Pray and say, Father, give me the grace not to neglect the assemblies of the brethren. Give me the grace to connect with the other disciples always, oh God. Give me the grace to be physically present in your presence in the name of Jesus. Anywhere my heart is broken. Father, comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me, oh Lord. Comfort me, Lord. Anywhere that I'm still feeling pain, Lord, comfort me. Heal my inner man. Heal my inner person. In the name of Jesus. Give me the grace to console and to comfort other people. I receive that grace today. I receive that grace today. To be a comfort to many in the name of Jesus. Father, every of my past mistakes, so go. I forgive myself. I forgive myself, oh Lord. I forgive people that have wronged me in the name of Jesus. Heal my inner man, oh God. Make me whole in the name of Jesus. Father, as I go around intentionally living my life for you, give me the grace, oh God, to receive the breath of life continually. And Lord, help me to empower others. Help me to empower others. Help me to empower my children, Lord. 
Ah, they are my disciples. Help me, Lord. Do not let me fail. Don't let me fail you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I receive the grace. I receive the auction to empower my children that they will live for you in this crook and perverse generation. My children will live for you. They will carry your banner in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. And so our Heavenly Father, you are the fourth man in fire. You are the one that walk upon the sea. Whether your children are upon the sea or they are in any form of fire, I pray today you will appear unto them. In the name of Jesus, that victory that you have given unto us, oh God, that we, are celebra that we celebrated last Sunday, oh God. We pray that on a daily basis, we will celebrate and we will enjoy. We will live our life enjoying the victory. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, our light will shine and the whole world will see, oh God, and they will give you glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We know that you are coming and you are coming very soon. Prince of Peace, our soon coming King, we know that you will appear. Father, may he not cut us unaware. In the name of Jesus, for adventure, there is anyone here today and saying, I am lacking. Father, let your strength come upon them. Let your grace come upon them. Let the power of God that brings salvation appear unto them and bring them unto your side, O God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' victorious name, we have prayed. Amen.